This is Twit. First, there's <laughs> there's that disparity, right? There's uh, right. You had, uh, you know, NVIDIA CEO on a stage announcing one set of prices, while at the same time on the NVIDIA site, there were pre-orders for a different set of prices that were higher than what was being announced. So maybe the announced prices are, okay, here's where the eventual MSRP is going to be. But if you want to pre-order these things, you're going to pay a $200 premium for a 2080 Ti. You're going to pay a $100 premium for a 2080. Um, yeah. And, it, you know, that's kind of steep already. Uh, if you look at not those kind of excessive prices, but at the MSRPs, those MSRPs roughly match uh, the previous generation, but one rung higher prices. In other words, mm -hmm. you compare a, a RTX 2080 to a GTX 1080 Ti, roughly, um, as far as price goes. Mm -hmm. And... What they appear to be doing is scaling that price proportional to the raster performance. In other words, the performance that you and I are used to hearing about, <laughs> right? So, right, because there, there, and there's um, there's another article we'll get to in a minute here that shows that uh, like a 2080 is roughly 1.5x a 1080 in raster performance. So putting aside the new features, it's just like okay, now you have some more of the older style cores for raster. Uh, you know, for your kind of regular non-fancy graphics. Um, and so the pricing sort of makes sense in that respect. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the pricing is an advantage for the new generation if you also consider the, those RTX specific features. RT standing for ray tracing. Basically, there's extra silicon in these new parts that's able to do not... Full ray tracing, but when combined with raster, right. with a raster pipeline, you're able to get sort of a hybrid result, and you're able to get things like actual reflections off of off of surfaces, uh, lighting coming from more than just a couple, one or two point sources in mm -hmm. the scene. Basically, a bunch of things that just the end result is a much more realistic looking um, scene in in whatever the game or you know whatever is being rendered, basically. Right. Um, now, it, you know the big the big trick there is you need support, right? Like the game engine has to support it. Like if you if you're not telling this thing to do these, you know, making these calls to imp, to do some form of ray tracing for the scene, if you don't pass that information to the to the engine, uh, it's not going to do anything with it. So you're not going right. to just magically get awesome reflections in older games. Like the, you need code changes to to get this effect. Um, and they can be pretty still, impressive. There's a there's like a Battlefield Five demo that's making the round that actually shows the differences the RTX, RTX 280 uh, will make. And you know it, when you see a demo that's set up to take advantage of the ray tracing with real time light reflections with cinematic effects, um, you know this is you know this is really kind of crazy to look at. But you know the 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 thing that uh, you know, I, I, I like how uh, Jeremy put it. Uh, uh, you know, the uh, it will be interesting to see how the numbers match up once reviewers get their hands on these cards. Because when you look at the slides from the presentation, um, you know, and that's that's a pretty badass. You know, if you if you haven't seen this, uh, uh, you should search out this Battlefield Five demo. Um, but you know, when you when you look at uh, when you look at the the chart they're sending out, it's like you know, Final Fantasy 15 HDR twice more than twice as fast, Epic Infiltrator more than twice as fast, you know, PUBG practically twice as fast, Ark Survival Evolved more than twice as fast, Hitman 2 HDR well one and a quarter times as fast, um, uh, you know, Wolfenstein 2 one and a half times as fast, give or take, right? Um, yep. You know, they're showing there, these there numbers also... that. There's also something else worth mentioning in that chart. Like, so what yeah. you're referencing is just the dark green bars there, which is showing, you know, about a 50% gain over the previous right. generation of, of the same card, basically, right? Um, but then there's this extra feature, which is another thing that is game specific, has to be added somehow to the game engine so that it can turn this extra feature on. And that's mm -hmm. called uh, DLSS, which is. I mean, we've seen a few things in the past few weeks about NVIDIA doing machine learning based, interesting uh, 
like post-processing effects, right? Like there was one thing recently where, which I think was covered on the show two mm -hmm. or three weeks ago, where they were taking um, uh, they were taking video and they were emulating like what a faster frame rate of that video was. Or they were doing other things like, you know, getting more detail out of it. Like the whole sci-fi version of Enhance Enhance. Um, turns out you can actually do if you train a machine learning like array of systems and you give it the lower resolution and then you give it the higher resolution and it's supposed to try to figure out how to get to the better resolution, like how to, you know, what is most likely that missing data, right? Right. Um, well, it turns out you can take that sort of thing uh, and you can sort of like, so that chart that we just showed here was mm -hmm. for 4K gaming. Well, the idea is that you can get gaming frame rates closer to what you would normally need lower resolutions to achieve. But the trick is that the engine can run at a slightly lower resolution when it's rendering the game. And then this DLSS machine learning related sort of uh, pipeline at the at the tail end of, of the, or the this um, post-processing at the tail end of the pipeline is mm -hmm. able to bring that, that end result back up to a uh, convincing 4K resolution image. And it's able to do that right. on the fly for every single frame as it's running, right? So the idea is uh, that now you, for, for games that are supporting it correctly, uh, you know, and I imagine there's some dials and knobs and stuff that they have to turn in the driver to kind of tune this and then like make it work properly on a game specific basis. Uh, but end result, you get 4K 60 gaming out of, in this case, they're only talking about the 2080. They're not even talking about the 2080 Ti, which would potentially <laughs> be even faster, right? Right. Um, you know, if it, if it holds the same way that it held before, usually the TI model is a roughly 50% gain over the non-TI model of the same number. And that's probably going to be the case here. But, you know, they're only showing the the 2080 results mm -hmm. in that in that chart we just showed, right? Which actually right. I think was... I don't know if they just don't have the TI results ready or maybe they were trying not to go crazy, like show off with their presentation and go, okay, like let's, right. let's not show the thousand or $1,200 card <laughs> as the thing that's able to do 4k 60. Like we can actually right. get there with one rung down, even though that one rung down is actually the price of what was previously like the 1080 TI, right? right I, which I mean was the high end card. You know, for for me, it's it's you want to look forward when you're buying a GPU because it tends to be a very expensive purchase that you want to last for a long time. Uh, on one hand, and on the other hand, so much of what people play are games that are, you know, aging or aged at this point. And I gotta say, I'll be really curious to see what sort of the existing crop of of sort of the classic, you know, we're testing a GPU, let's roll out these games. I'm kind of really curious to see what the numbers and the performance are like, um, you know, because with ray tracing, like, you know, 6x the performance, it's super mondo awesome, cool. Uh, and on the other hand, it's like, okay, but what about all of the credible, you know, uh, back catalog of games that are not and probably will never have this implemented? I think it's going to be, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm very curious to see what it is. I'm curious what availability is going to be like on these cards. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, we'll, you know, we'll see. Yeah, and those, uh, and, and those, and those six X or eight X or ten X claims that like they were kind of sprinkling throughout the presentation. That is, if you tried to do these ray tracing effects on the previous generation hardware, right? Right. So, yes, there are enormous gains over the prior generation if you want to get these same effects. Um, in my mind, that's kind of a cheat though, because it's like, okay, this is something where the previous generation didn't even have hardware specifically designed for it, right? So, right. The, you know, this newer stuff, the touring architecture has these, uh, you know, um, ray tracing specific uh, pipelines built into the silicon. Right. So yes, of course it's able to do it much faster, uh, especially <laughs> when you're doing hardware specific for a very, you know, a very specific type of math that's not something that you could usually optimize well on like some, you know, like raster shaders and things like that. Um, to use a completely so random comparison, it's like trying to have a bosun's made twiddle the knobs uh, on the reactor or to 
have somebody that runs a nuclear reactor try to tie things to the deck of a boat. There's just, it's, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. it's, it's, it, but it's, it, there's also, there, there's a long history of, of, you know, benchmarks and gaming and everywhere else where we choose a particularly optimal situation that you probably won't be able to run into in the real world, but it makes our thing look really big. Um, yeah, yeah. I just said that. Um, <laughs> But the, the effects are very impressive. I mean, we're, uh, you know, looking at them on a screen at a press event and then for all of us that weren't at the press event, seeing it only via Twitch, uh, you know, mm -hmm. which was completely killing the, you know, it was juddering because the frame rate of Twitch wasn't right. matching with the frame rate of the, you know, of the, of the event and the live stream and whatnot. Um, so we really have to be able to sit at a system and see these things in person to kind of like make that start to even attempt to make that judgment call on. Right. Uh, are these differences really something that you're going to want to go after? And, you know, or is it something where you would rather just get a higher frame rate with the newer hardware playing the game without these features even enabled? Because when you enable them, it's not like you, suddenly the game will go 4K60. All right. If you're trying to do right. ray tracing you know, even hybrid ray tracing, th those claims we were just looking at on that other slide where they were claiming 4K60 gaming, that's probably not with RTX on. Now, it might be, but probably not. I'm thinking that frame rate's going to come down some to be able to do that sort of math. You know, we're, we're talking about something that uh, was just, you know, not a thing that was even feasible. And now suddenly we're doing it. I would be surprised if... We're doing it at 4K60 at the same time that this brand new, very complicated technology rolled out, right? Maybe we can get there with another generation or something. But, um, you know, right now, I don't think it's going to be super fast frame rate and all this amazing, you know, shadow effects and transparency effects and lighting effects and everything all at the same time. Maybe, you know, once the, the game engine guys can do better optimizations and, you know, sort of cut some extra corners and whatnot and squeeze a little right. bit more performance out of it, you know, then, then maybe we'll get there. Um, but not initially I'm thinking. So between, between the prices, between that price mismatch between pre-orders and mm -hmm. what's I think MSRPs and the lack of a lot of titles that even can do this, uh, you know, when you put all that together, it's probably best to hold off on the pre-order right. and at least wait for the price to come down to what their stated price is, <laughs> right? Um, and then hopefully there'll be a couple more uh, releases using the engine updates that you know can implement the ray tracing effects and whatnot.